The Harbour Process. What is the most important discovery of the past century? Is it the computer, the car, or even the mobile phone? Some would argue it's this process, the Harbour Process. A nitrogen gas molecule plus three hydrogen gas molecules react to produce two ammonia gas molecules. Without this reaction, farmers would be capable of producing food for just over 4 billion people. Our current population is just over 7 billion, so without this process, 3 billion people may starve. For plants, nitrogen in the form of nitrate is essential for plant growth. 80% of the air is nitrogen, but crops can't just consume nitrogen from the air because it's very stable. Nitrogen contains a very strong triple bond which plants can't break. The harbour process is used industrially to fix atmospheric nitrogen to produce 500 million tonnes of ammonia each year using an iron catalyst. Most of the ammonia is converted into ammonium sulphate for fertilisers, which helps to feed about 40% of the world's population. The process requires high temperatures of 400 to 400 degrees C and pressures of 200 atmospheres. As a result, it consumes more than 1% of the energy generated in the world each year. The process was named after its inventors, Fritz Haber and Karl Bosch. The process is used to produce fertilisers today. The obvious source of nitrogen is the air, however nitrogen is stable and will not readily react with other chemicals. During World War I, the process was used for the production of nitric acid, a precursor to nitrates used in explosives. Ammonia synthesis follows what chemists call a langmuir hinshelwood mechanism. The first step involves the dissociative absorption of nitrogen and hydrogen onto the catalyst surface. Nitrogen has a strong bond, so this requires a lot of energy to break. The next step involves the combination of absorbed nitrogen with hydrogen until NH3 is formed. For ammonia gas to be produced and isolated, the ammonia must desorb from the catalyst surface. This is the final step of the reaction. To understand the conditions needed for the reaction, we must first understand the term equilibrium. If you were to place nitrogen and hydrogen with a catalyst at high temperatures and pressures into a sealed container, the two molecules would react to form ammonia. But as nitrogen and hydrogen are used up, the reaction slows down. Eventually, the ammonia molecules reach a point where they begin to decompose back into nitrogen and hydrogen. The temperature. Chemists need to shift the position of the equilibrium as far right as possible in order to maximise the ammonia production. The forward reaction is exothermic, so according to the Chalier's principle, it will be favoured if you lower the temperature. However, 400 to 450 degrees C is not a low temperature. The lower the temperature, the slower the reaction. Industries need the gases to reach equilibrium within the short time that they will be in contact with the catalyst. The pressure. Notice that there are four molecules on the left hand side of the equation, but only two on the right. If you increase the pressure, the system will respond by favouring the reaction which produces fewer molecules. That will cause the pressure to fall again. In order to get as much ammonia as possible in the equilibrium mixture, you need a high pressure. 200 atmospheres is a high pressure. A chemist's job is to find a new catalyst that is more economical and ecologically friendly. New researchers find that the ruthenium catalyst worked well for this reaction at lower temperatures and pressures. Ruthenium may be very expensive compared to the current iron catalysts, however their ability to work at lower temperatures and pressures reduce their energy consumption and running costs. This means that catalysts have good appeal industrially. However, with all new research, these catalysts do suffer with their own problems. In particular, problems arising from the catalyst poisoned with hydrogen. Catalyst poisoning refers to the partial or total deactivation of the catalyst. It no longer works. Now, researchers in Tokyo Institute of Technology have designed a new catalyst without this issue. The team has found that the stable inorganic electrode is an efficient electron donating ligand for ruthenium in this reaction. It is extremely good at promoting the dissociation of the nitrogen triple bond. Its ability to absorb hydrogen ions into its crystal structure reduces hydrogen poisoning. The ruthenium catalyst has optimal backbonding for nitrogen dissociation.